Locals and tourists enjoyed unseasonably warm weather at Madrid's Retiro Park on Friday in the middle of Spain's winter. As people walked shirtless, rode at the park's lake, and sat at outdoor cafes, some were worried that the spring-like temperature could mean that the summer season could become unbearable. I'm really scared, because if now, during December, we are wearing short sleeves, then in a few years, during summer, we wouldn't be able to live here. I'm really thinking whether we are going to be able to live here. It's climate change. It's the biggest sign of climate change. If before, you needed to wear a coat during January, and now you can wear short sleeves and shorts, it's a bad sign. It's a spring-summer day. We don't need all the clothes we brought to Madrid, and we left our coats. It's going to be a great day. I wake up thinking about the weather, as I need to choose my clothes, and I don't know what to wear. If I should take the coat or just a thin jacket will do. By midday on Friday, the temperature in the capital had reached 23 degrees Celsius, or 73 degrees Fahrenheit. The meteorology service said it expected temperatures to reach 28 degrees Celsius, or 82 degrees Fahrenheit, in parts of Andalusia, in southern Spain, with many other parts of the country climbing to 20 degrees Celsius, which is up to 10 degrees Celsius above normal levels for the time of the year in some places. Scientists have linked scorching temperatures and dry and windy conditions in many parts of the world, including southern Europe, to climate change. Last year was the second warmest on record in Spain, with consecutive heat waves causing droughts and wildfires. Whether it's money laundering or car theft, each case can have irreversible legal consequences and, in fact, be undermined because the acting attorney general is unrecognized by the National Prosecutor's Office. What chaos can arise in the Polish justice system? Today, I will be taking a closer look at it. The reality is that the Constitution is being violated, and we, on the other hand, have been accused of this constantly without any basis. The law is being broken. State organs, including the prosecutor's office, are being taken over. Adam Bodnar's decision to dismiss prosecutors currently working at the Warsaw Regional Prosecutor's Office from their postings could have deplorable consequences. The unit is in danger of becoming paralyzed, with the dismissal of investigators who are conducting extremely important yet complex and multifaceted investigations, including frauds involving hundreds of millions, money laundering, document trafficking and identity theft. The Lawyers for Poland Association warns of legal chaos, harming the constitutional rights of citizens, mainly the rights of crime victims. The lawyers made the appeal to Jacek Bilewicz, appointed as acting national prosecutor. As very experienced practitioners in the application of the law, we warn you that pretrial arrests, even in the most appalling cases, will be overturned because the investigation was previously extended by a flawed prosecutor, namely your appointee. The indictments and other motions initiating proceedings forwarded to the courts by your nominee will be returned. Appeals filed by your nominee will be left without consideration. All your personnel decrees will know their finale in the labor courts. If he makes procedural decisions regarding operational actions, prolonging investigations in serious cases that often go on for many years, such decisions will be ineffective. The judges call on Jacek Bilewicz to come to his senses and stop performing his functions, and also to apologize for becoming entangled in the intrigue of his superiors. The situation can be analogously compared to Adam Bodnar's questioning of the validity of the appointment of national prosecutor Dariusz Barski. The consequences of these decisions were very significant, and the fact that Prosecutor Barski was not recognized as a prosecutor would mean that a number of decisions by other prosecutors appointed by Prosecutor Barski would be questioned. This would generate very negative consequences for victims of crime. What is really at stake? Is it the desire for politicians' power over the prosecutor's office? Sławomir Nitras accuses prosecutors of being party functionaries because they decided to charge a notary who was supposed to read and sign five notarial deeds regarding the change of power of public media with Minister of Culture and National Heritage Bartłomiej Sienkiewicz within 107 minutes of the same's resolution. 
The notary is currently out of the country. After several days, it turns out that according to the courts, this is a completely illegal action. However, Mr. Shinkevich concludes that he is resorting to liquidation. But as it turned out in recent days, liquidation is a violation of the law too. The ruling party's argument is that it wants to clean up the prosecutor's office and courts after law and justice. We have to deal with such diabolization of those prosecutors who behave according to the law. They are being presented as some kind of prosecutors from Mr. Jobro. These are people who hold public office, who serve Poland, and for that, they should be respected. Edyta Hodyńska, TV Republika. French farmers blocked highways and dumped crates of imported produce on Thursday, January 25th, demanding urgent action on low farm gate prices, green regulation and free trade policies as swelling protests moved closer to Paris. Farmers said the protests now in their second week after breaking out in the southwest would continue as long as their demands are not met, posing the first big challenge for new prime minister Gabriel Attal. We are sincerely hoping to get a response. It's not normal to have to do all this for nothing. It's not normal. But it's true that if the measures proposed tomorrow are not significant enough, all the guys will do everything to get to Paris. There you go. And once they are in Paris, well, me, I no longer control the situation in Paris. Here, I control the situation. In Paris, I don't control the situation. Farmers, including retired ones and soon-to-be owners of farms, blocked the A16 highway with their tractors near Beauvais, north of Paris. Onwards to Paris to put maximum pressure, so that our politicians understand that this is no longer working. We've already been in Paris. This will be the fourth time that I head to Paris. And each time we go to Paris, we go one day, we leave, we're granted little measures, we go home, and nothing is implemented. This time, it's over. Measures must be applied and must be retroactive to January 1st and they must be implemented. What's difficult is the pain my parents went through all their lives, since I was little. No vacations, exhaustion. At the same time, that's what I like. It's a job we're passionate about, above all. But the fear is that after having done all of this and having committed to it, put in peril what it took them 40 years to build, to take over and to fail, it wouldn't necessarily be our fault. It would be the fault of, well, let's say it, of supermarkets and the state that did not take action for France's agricultural section. French intelligence services have warned the government that regional farming unions have called on their members to converge on the capital. In the southwestern city of Agen, farmers dumped vegetables and tires in front of the train station, also decrying tough regulations imposed by the European Union, which are costly to adhere to. The powerful FNSEA farming union late on Wednesday handed the government a list of their demands, including better enforcement of a law designed to safeguard farm gate prices, diesel tax breaks, and immediate payment of EU agricultural subsidies, among others. According to TV Republika editor-in-chief Tomasz Sakiewicz, the failure to let our journalists into Monday's conference was dictated by the minister's fear. He is afraid of public opinion. They are afraid to tell the people why they are unlawfully occupying the public media, why they are using a whole bunch of unlawful actions that are both a violation of the Constitution and a violation of all laws related to the protection of freedom of speech. The notice to the prosecutor's office on the possibility of a crime concerns a violation of Article 44, Act 1 of the press law, which states, whoever obstructs or suppresses press criticism shall subject to a fine or the penalty of restriction of liberty. This is called lawlessness. You are a television station that is achieving a very high viewership at the moment. And if only for this reason, because you represent certain audiences, and these audiences are becoming more and more numerous. The Press Freedom Monitoring Center of the Association of Polish Journalists protests against violations of the press law, not allowing journalists to attend press conferences or any public events of the authorities and officials in office, both of the central and local governments. But here let's focus on the central government. This action is absolutely a suppression of press criticism. 
The issue of the unlawful failure to allow our journalists to attend Minister Shinkevich's conference was also raised by MP Jan Narihotska at the Parliamentary Committee on Culture and Media. Not allowing an independent TV journalist to attend a press conference on January 22, 2024 was another act of repression against the independent press that has occurred since the Donald Tusk government took power. This is not the first time the government has closed its doors to our journalists. When Donald Tusk gave an interview to three TV stations at once on January 12th, our newsroom, despite their efforts, did not get permission to participate in the interview. Unfortunately, as of 12 o'clock, the only information we got was that the head of the Government Information Center would contact the station if he was interested. Symbolically, the Prime Minister did not get a single difficult question during the entire interview. Mentally, the politicians of the Civic Platform are still in 2014 or 2013. They are not used to the fact that there is any strong player in the market who allows themselves to doubt their power. During Monday's conference of Lieutenant Colonel Minister Bartłomiej Sienkiewicz, a reporter for TV Republika Łukasz Muda wanted to ask him about the illegal takeover of public media. The reporter wanted to. However, despite proper accreditation, TV Republika's crew was not allowed into the ministry. Pavel Boch, TV Republika.